Top 10 mistakes ng mga low-carb and fasting DIY learners, yung mga do-it-yourself learners. Ano yung ginagawa ninyong top 10 na mali based on my clinical practice after practicing low-carb and fasting nutrition as a doctor for 3 years now? And before this, going 5 years na po tayong nagla-low-carb at nagla-fasting, but I've been applying this in my private practice for three years now. So this is your diet, Dr. Dr. Josephine Grace Rohatan. I've missed you all. It's been a while since our last live episode. So I hope you are all excited to know kung ano yung top 10 mistakes na ginagawa ng karamihan na natututo ng low carb and fasting on their own, yung DIY nga, ika nga. So, isa ka ba sa mga naglo-low carb pero parang wala pa rin ganong progress, hindi pa rin full yung kanyang healing. Yung iba naman, sobra-sobrang pumayat. Yung iba naman, yung GERD, yung anxiety, ay nandyan pa din. Yung iba, marami nga ang naglo-low carb, umokay na yung kanilang blood sugar, Pero mataas pa rin yung kanilang cholesterol and most importantly among the cholesterol, mataas pa rin yung kanilang triglycerides. And how about those na meron pa ring allergies? Meron pa ring mga pananakit sa kanilang joints? Meron pa ring arthritis? Parating masakit ang katawan kahit naka low carb? And yung iba, pinupulikat sa gabi, nagkakaroon ng palpitations, yung BP, shoot up and then the next time around, sobrang baba na naman. So, BP fluctuations. Bakit nagkakaroon ng ganito? Bakit nangihina? At yun nga, yung isa sa pinaka-concern sa lahat, bakit sobrang taas na kanilang LDL? So, those are the things that we will tackle today. Yung top 10 mistakes na ginagawa ng mga DIY low-carbers at kung paano natin ito makorrect. So, are you ready? Hello po! Thank you so much, everyone! for being here and I'm so excited to be with you in our live episode today. Kakatapos lang ng ating patient consultations for this morning. And that is why I decided to be with you today kasi sobrang nababahala na ako sa mga telemed consultation patients natin na halos pare-pareho lang yung kanilang problema. And most of them, yun nga, ay hindi pa guided yung kanilang learning. So number one mistake na nakikita natin would be Naglo low carb pero hindi pala totoong low carb. Lower carb lang. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Yes, they were able to remove yung kanilang rice pero kinuha nga nila yung kanilang kanin. So mababa nila yung kan- mababa na yung kanilang rice intake pero yung pagkain nila ng wheat bread, ng oatmeal, ng patatas, french fries, mais, corn, at marami pang ibang other grains and other starches ay nandyan pa din. So, when it comes to low carb, yung ating priority talaga is to eliminate muna yung mga malalaking carbs, yung mga high carbs nga na tinatawag natin. Kasi kung in-eliminate mo yung isang carb lang, like kanin, or say for example, tinapay lang, pero nagpapasta ka pa din, kumakain ka pa rin ng biskuit, ng crackers, so hindi ka talaga naka-low carb, naka-lower carb lamang. So yes, of course, it is better than high carb. Okay na rin yun. That's good enough progress. Pero if marami pa kayong kailangang paggaling, you still need to heal more, then maybe it's not enough. So yes, makakita na kayo ng improvement, medyo gumagabaan yung iyong pakiramdam, pero yung full healing na gusto nyo talagang makamtan ay baka hindi ito maa-achieve ng basta-basta. So it's better to go on Real low carb. Kung gusto talagang makita yung improvements natin, hello to our 742 live viewers. And if you can share this video on your family and friends in, in your timeline, better to do so. Kasi medyo matagal na yung last nating paglalive. Baka hindi na alaman ng iba, especially if you're following the page, pero nakafollow lang at hindi nyo na favorite. So, minsan hindi kayo na notify that we are already live. So, help your friends and family by tagging them and sharing this video on your timeline. Going back, you have to go to real low carb. Real low carb is nasa 50 gram of carbohydrate limit lamang in a day. Kung titingnan natin yung 50 gram na yan on high carb food, that is just one cup of rice in a day, whole day na yan. 
or isang patatas, isang siguro isang isang fist nagpatatas, isa lang and no more other sources of carbs or isang bowl ng oatmeal after niyan wala ka ng allowed carbs. So imagine if you give in to isang buong uh, co- isang buong mais, so you already don't have any allowance for carbs. So kung naka-isang mais ka sa morning uh, or isang oatmeal, tapos nag-half rice ka, pero nung snacks, kumain ka ng crackers or biscuit, and nung dinner, kumain ka pa ng patatas na kasama sa chop suey. So actually, you are already eating maybe nasa 100 grams of carbohydrates na in a day. If you want to lower your inflammation in the body, making your insulin resistance. Alam niyo na kung ano yung insulin resistance, di ba? Gusto natin maging insulin sensitive ulit tayo. And the only way to do that is wag muna natin i-challenge yung katawan natin sa maraming carbohydrate intake. Take more of the proteins and fats which we will tackle in a short while. So, yes, do low carb the right way. 50 gram of carbs and Ang um, kung nalulungkot kayo sa isang cup of rice lang in a day, remember na yung 50 gram of carbs na yon ay katumbas yon sa halos mm, nasa isang kilo na ng green leafy vegetables or nasa 750 grams. No? So halos isang kilo. Hindi natin mauubo sa isang kilo ng vegetables in a day if you will just talk about low-carb vegetables as your carbohydrate source. So, yun. Number one mistake ay akala nila naka-low-carb na sila pero hindi pala totoo. Lower-carb lang, inalis lang yung kanin or tinapay pero kumakain pa rin ng other carbs. Other carbs also that people still do not eliminate when they start low-carb would be fruits. So, baka naka-low-carb nga kayo, wala na kayong kinakain matatamis, wala na kayong kinakain bread and pasta and starches, pero baka sobrang taas ng fructose intake ninyo coming from fruits. So, excuse muna tayo, vacation muna tayo from fruits, especially if you are still starting. So, yan yung ating number one mistakes. If hindi nyo mistake yan, so congratulations. Maybe you are doing low-carb the right or at least better way. So, move on to number two mistake would be hidden sugars. Kasi, Yung sugar, hindi lang po nasa table sugar. Hindi lang yung white sugar, hindi lang yung brown sugar. Yung honey ay sugar pa din. Okay? Yung coconut sugar, kahit low carb yung coconut, pero yung cocoa sugar ay mataas sa fructose. So, hindi pa rin yun okay in low carb. And how about zero calorie drinks? Although they are zero calorie drinks, yung criteria kasi when you say na zero calorie, hindi talaga siya as in zero, zero, but not more than one. So maybe it's 0. 0.8, 0. 0.7, but meron pa rin siyang sugar component, especially if you are consuming them regularly up to three times a day. Naka-low carb, pero yung mga zero soda, diet soda, ay nakastak lang three times a day, kinukonsumo. So hidden sugars, you have to be wary Saan pa natin pa rin mahanap yung hidden sugars? Condiments. So yung mga nasa ketchup, nasa mga seasonings, and many others, baka meron yang hidden sugars. And of course, yung mga nabibili natin merong label na sugar-free are actually not real sugar-free. Yung sinasabi nilang sugar-free, walang table sugar or white sugar. But it doesn't mean wala na siyang component na equivalent to sugar. So, mga maltodrexin, yung mga even sucralose, at some point, meron pa rin silang effect. So, if you want to go on low carb the right way, especially for starting, when it comes to healing, hindi lang yung diet-diet lang, papapayat, papasexy lang, yung gusto mo talagang optimum health, you better want to make sure na walang hidden sugars yung inyong kinakain. What's the the trick para walang hidden sugar yung kinakain mo, anong kailangan gawin? Hindi na kailangan bumili ng kung anong pagkain na merong ingredients na nakalista. Because real natural foods actually don't need to have labels like 
the ones that you are buying in wet market. Kapag bumili kayo ng karne, ng manok, ng itlog, ng baboy, wala ng nutrition facts na kailangan. Wala ng list of ingredients na kailangan because it's all natural. So when you eat foods that are mostly all natural, hindi na kailangan isipin kung may hidden sugar ba yan. And of course, yung kahit pa totoong pork, pero kung binili nyo na sa karinderiya na naluto na, pork chop na, menudo, afritada, or kung ano-ano pang luto, yon Buying foods outside your home are already considered as baka marami ng hidden sugars then so i hope you are all well and happy with your low carb journey and hindi niyo nagagawa yung mga mistakes na ito number three mistake are leading to our mommies and daddies na sobra ng payat hindi na sila masaya sinasabihan na silang hindi na sila healthy looking para na silang magkat nagkasakit at ano yung mistake na yon number three mistake would be too much fasting na sobrahan na yung fasting sexing sexy na yung bmi nila ay nasa lower limit na 18.519. Kung ikaw ay 5 yung height mo, tapos yung weight mo ay nasa 38 kilograms na lang, ay nako, sobra-sobra na po yung inyong pagka-sexy. So, maybe you are already doing too much fasting, just like my patient this morning. Oh, mad na lang. Isang beses na lang siyang kumakain sa isang araw, kahit normal na yung kanyang BMI. Yung isang struggle kasi, wala na daw ang ganang kumain. But of course, we have to challenge ourselves. One way to counter that, kasi sa mga mommies na wala nang ganang kumain, it's because your metabolism baka bumaba na din at nag-stabilize na nga kayo sa ganyang klaseng pagkain na isang beses na lang sa isang araw at wala na kayong gana the rest of the day. But sometimes, okay lang sana kung enough yung kinakain mo sa isang araw na yon Yung pinaplano mo talaga kung ano yung kakainin mo. However, if you are not able to plan well kung ano yung kakainin mo, baka kinukulang kayo sa target nutrients and calories that you need in a day. So, if you do that, kailangan bigyan nyo ng motivation ng inyong sarili to eat more. And one, one trick to do that is to actually spend more energy by exercising or doing some tasks na nagre-require ng brain power, yung mental work talaga. Those can also increase your energy requirement in a day so that kung kayo ay nasa target BMI na, hindi na kayo kailangan mag-20 hours of fasting, hindi na kayo kailangan mag-18 hours or one meal a day lang. Pwede kayong mag-lower down into even 12 hours in a day as long as it is circadian fasting. Ano nga yung circadian fasting natin? Nare-remember nyo pa ba? Nakita nyo na ba yung video natin on what's the best kind of fasting na madali ding sundin? It is the circadian fasting. So simple lang, regardless of your work schedule, ang circadian fasting, yung importante lang, yung last meal ninyo, yung huling kain ninyo bago kayo matulog, is eaten. Dapat natapos na kayong kumain 4 to 6 hours before your bedtime. So maraming salamat for sharing this video. We are now nearing 1,200 live viewers. Maraming salamat po. So I hope... You are not fasting too much. It's already 12 noon sa mga hindi pa kumakain at yung last meal nila, sumunod sila sa ating circadian fasting na alas 6 ng hapon ay tapos na silang kumain. You are already at 18 hours of fasting and if target na yung inyong weight goals, you can already enjoy your low-carb meals. However, merong iba na okay naman yung kanilang ginagawa. Pero yun, nag-gird pa din. Na, like yung isang patient natin sa telemed po, pumunta ng emergency room, nagsusuka, and hindi nila mawari. When they check all the electrolytes, all good, all the laboratories are normal. Alam nyo kung saan sila nagkakamali? Nako, baka kayo ay isa rin dito. And you are worrying too much. When you are in low carb, you try to enjoy the process, okay? Although low carb, nutrition, fasting the right way, Sobrang laki niyan ang nagagawa niyan when it comes to our health. However, if kayo ay nag-worry, if you are doing it right, 
sobra kahit okay na okay na sinunod niyo na lahat ng ating videos na na, na panood niyo na ang lahat ng videos and hello pala sa mommy ng friend ko na si Doc Jana Tita thank you so much for always watching sabi ni Jana during our opening yesterday lahat daw ng video ay napanood niyo na so that's why yes magla-live video na tayo ulit dahil baka naubos niyo na yung lahat ng videos natin in YouTube when it comes to all the LCF learning. So, hello po. And I hope you are not worried too much. Enjoy the process. Know and trust yourself that you are doing it right. Especially kapag naubos natin ang top 10 mistakes na ito. Make sure you are not committing them. So, try not to worry too much and enjoy the process kasi if you are stressing yourself out, kahit sobrang ganda ng inyong pag-low carb, ay baka tumaas pa rin yung inyong glucose level sa katawan because of stress response. Huwag ma-stress. Try to enjoy, try to do meditation, breathing exercises, do journaling, talk to a friend. So yan, yung LCF Center natin in Ortigas, it's now open. Kung gusto nyo, meron kayong makausap like a support group or like a friend lang uh, regarding your low-carb journey, welcome na welcome kayo doon. And of course, here in our LCF Center, Cebu, in our clinic, magbubukas na rin tayo to the public by schedule para for those who want to have people to talk to. Kasi iba rin yung meron kang nakakausap na like-minded individuals. Lucky are those na merong family members and loved ones ones na merong kasabayan sa low carb. But if not, so it's okay. Mara malaki po yung community natin. We can help you with that one. Marami kayong pwedeng makausap. And of course, yung maganda din, create your own tribe. Make your own tribe. However, mahirap po mag-convince ng ibang tao if kayo mismo ay hindi mismo sigurado sa ginagawa ninyo. That is why we have this online learning programs na LCF Masterclass for you to know if you are doing it right and for you to be able to help others. Mas madaling makatulong sa iba when you know you are, you know what you are doing. Okay? So, yon. So, recap muna tayo. Mistake number one, hindi totoong low carb yung ginagawa, but low carb, lower carb lamang. Number two, hindi alam, but marami palang hidden sugar na kinakain. Number three, yung mga sobra-sobra-sobra ng payat. Too much na yung kanyang fasting. And number four, too worried. So, hindi niya ninyo na-enjoy yung journey natin because you are too worried. So, move on to Number five mistake would be inflammatory low carb. Low carb nga, pero it's inflammatory low carb. So isa yan, of course, yung mga vegetable oil, yung mga trans fats. But there is one component na low carb na very, very commonly used. And I hope you will be able to uh, take caution, precautionary measures when you use this uh, component, when you use this ingredient. Kasi usong-uso siya dahil masarap siya at eto talaga ay parang nakaka-fix ng mga nagki-crave ng mga sweets, ng mga desserts at nagiging staple na nga sa ating pantry. I admit, meron din ako nito from time to time but there are better options and yes, you can still take this pero kailangan aware kayo sa dami nito. So these are number one sa nakita ko would be all-purpose cream. So sino sa inyo yung guilty na gumagamit ng all-purpose cream because all-purpose cream, yes, yung totoong, all, yung totoong cream, yung mga heavy cream, are extracted from milk, okay? So, yun ay puro fats. And fats are, these fats are generally natural, pero all-purpose cream are already processed kind of cream. And one tablespoon of that is already around 15 grams of fats. So, imagine kung gumagawa kayo ng mga, ano yun, so yung mga coffee jelly na low-carb, or anything like milk tea na low carb at yung ginagamit yung all-purpose cream, baka nakakaubos kayo ng isang pakete niyan. So isang pakete niyan, 250 ml, 250 ml, that's almost 250 ml of fats na din. So if you will have that, ang alam mo yung average na kailangan natin ng fats ay less than 100 grams lamang in a day. So you are consuming two and half. So, times 2.5 ng kailangan nating fats in a day. Not to mention na meron pa tayong kinakaing taba ng baboy, meron pa tayong mga cheese pa minsan-minsan, meron pa tayong chicken skin, and even the healthy oils like coconut oil, avocado, 
but they can just become extra oil, extra energy sa katawan natin na hindi rin natin kailangan. So I hope when you choose low carb, especially kung nasa bumibili kayo ng mga mga commercialized products na low carb na like yon, like all purpose cream and many others, you make sure that you consume them less, okay? So be mindful when you consume them. You consume them. Hindi niyo sila gagawing equivalent na parang gatas before na isang baso, isang buong pakete ay uubusin niyo. So these can result into still possible inflammation and yes, uh, certain kinds of whey protein isolates can also be inflammatory. We have experiences na nag-whey protein isolate sila and we cannot control kasi sobrang dami ng available na whey protein isolate but we noticed now when it comes to their labs nagkakaroon ng uh, inflammation in the liver so walang fatty liver na evidence na fatty liver but there are liver enzymes na tumataas so it's causing some degree of inflammation so it may not be applicable to you but these are the ones that we have noticed so if you want your proteins try to take them from real sources from natural sources. If you want fats, consume them from natural sources then. Okay? So avoid inflammatory low carb. Also saying avoid yung mga artificially, chemically produced kind of low carb. Okay? Low carb products. So it is related to our number six mistake. So I know yung number six mistake na yan is too much goodies. So low carb goodies are our friend. Friend. Yeah, and so I think our connection na uh, wala nang kakaunti. So I hope this connection is better. So okay na tayo. And moving on to our top six mistakes. So too much goodie. So again, yung mga low-carb goodies po are our friend. Friend natin yung mga low-carb goodies. Pero hindi natin sila kailangang ikonsumo three times a day. And most importantly, kailangan... When we consume them, if ever, either on special occasions or pagkatapos na po nating makonsume yung required talaga nating needed calories and needed nutrients na kailangan natin from day to day. So, too much goodies, meaning halos hindi na kayo kumakain ng inyong required proteins in a day, but puro low-carb bread na lamang, puro na lamang kung ano-anong mga coconut bread, almond bread, those are okay with low-carb, pero kung yun yung kakainin mo, you will choose that over your natural proteins and fats ay hindi yon maganda. So, yun. Too much goodies are also one of the reasons why yung mga merong mga pananakit ng katawan, yung masakit pa rin yung ulo, nagkakaroon ng digestive upset, those might be the possible reasons. So, number seven, yung number seven mistake natin in low carb na nakikita natin is the lack of electrolytes. So, I think yung marami na, yung hindi na takot sa asin, di ba? We've already covered that. So, generally, one to three teaspoons of salt kailangan natin in a day. But of course, iba-iba yan when it comes to salt tolerance. My usual advice is you take at least one teaspoon. Tapos kung nagsisimula pa lang kayo ng low carb, you can increase it little by little. So you can increase it from one teaspoon in a day to 1.5 to two up to three teaspoons in a day. Yan kasama na yung mga asin na nasa inyong kinakain, sa inyong niluluto. Okay? However, if meron kayong signs of electrolyte or salt intolerance, like nagkakaroon ng edema, nagkakaroon ng pagmamanas sa paa, and then nagkakaroon din ng paglaki ng eye bags after you take those extra salt, then baka hindi kayo tolerant on salt. So not everyone is tolerant on salt. So try to notice that. If ever hindi kayo ganun ka tolerant on salt, so try to lower it down to at least one teaspoon in a day. And how about potassium? 
usually yung potassium talaga nakukulangan in low carb, especially na merong mga iba na prone to hypokalemia. If kayo ay merong mga history ng palpitations, yung frequent cramps, na nagka-cramps yung paa habang natutulog, nagigising because of cramps, yung mga lalaki merong recurrent history of erectile dysfunction, those might be related to potassium imbalance. So, right now, yung mga natural foods natin, hindi na ganun kataas sa potassium. Of course, except avocado na alam natin we may, may not be that available all day, every day of our lives. So, it's best to take electrolyte na lang in tablet form when you can because yung natural pala na electrolyte na potassium noong unang panahon were obtained coming from soil, from the earth talaga. Kasi noong unang panahon, naglalakad tayo, nagpapaalang tayo. So, Electrolytes like magnesium and potassium are actually best absorbed then through our skin. Kaya lang hindi na tayo nagpapaa, di ba? Naglalakad tayo, nakasapatos na, nakachinelas na. And even if you will do grounding, walk in the soil and walk in the pavement, hindi na rin ganun ka-potassium rich yung nilalakaran natin. So that's why for some, baka kailangan mag-take in ng, L- ng potassium supplementation. How about yung potassium supplement na nabibili sa mga health stores? It might not be enough kasi yung supplemental dose is just 99 milligrams. And our required RDA, required daily allowance for potassium, is 3,500 gram, milligrams. So if yan yung iinumin nyo, baka kailangan yung inom ng 35 tablets in a day. So sobra-sobra naman yun. I don't think I have met anyone na okay lang sa kanilang uinom ng ganong 35 milligrams of 35 tablets of potassium. So there are higher doses, prescription doses, na mabibili naman sa butika. Kailangan nga lang ng prescription. That's why you can consult with your local physician or you can also do our telemed. So we do now have a telemedicine consultation wherein wala pong face-to-face. I'm sorry po. Yung telemed po ay uh, email exchange lamang. You will fill up the form and then after you fill up the form, I will reply. I will read your history. Lalagay niyo kung ano yung kinakain niyo and I will make recommendations based sa sinapmit ninyo kung paano natin may improve. And if I feel like you need electrolyte or potassium, then I can give prescription for that. But generally, kung hindi naman kayo nag electrolyte imbalance, then then it's okay. Baka enough lang yung electrolyte intake ninyo. Other natural sources, try to watch our video on the top natural sources of electrolytes, especially potassium in low-carb lifestyle like coconut sap vinegar. So isang tablespoon ng ating coconut vinegar ay meron ng around 100 milligrams of potassium. So of course, avocado certain nuts and seeds, ay meron ding mga electrolytes like magnesium and many others. Green leafy vegetables, yes, that can also have potassium na pwede ninyong makuha. However, meron din yang kaviat na kailangan nating isipin on our top eight mistake na we will go through. But lacking electrolytes, hindi lang palpitations, hindi lang muscle cramps, hindi lang panghihina. It can also manifest as BP fluctuation. So kung kayo ay merong hypertension noon, tapos parang gumaling na with low carb, but nakikita ninyo na bigla itong minsan sumo, tumataas na sobrang taas, like from very low na 100 over 70, and then bigla itong nag-150, bigla itong nag-160, and then after two hours, pag-check niyo ulit, normal na naman. So those might be compensation ng puso natin because it's already lacking electrolytes. So those are serious pero madaling makorekt. So that's why you have to seek consult if that is your case. So moving on to our mistake number eight would be too many vegetables. I think ako lang ata yung doktor na, na maririnig niyo magsasabi sa inyo na so merong too much when it comes to vegetables. Kasi di ba, lumaki tayo na inisip natin eating vegetables is the healthiest. There are now vegetarian and a lot of vegan movements na puro gulay lang yung kinakain. But for me, I believe it's not the natural way for humans to eat. By evolution, omnivore tayo. Kumakain tayo ng vegetables, but kumakain din tayo ng karne. In fact, the moment we discovered fire, as ay mas marami na yung karne kinakain natin. So, 
too many vegetables. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Hindi na kumakain ng required proteins, hindi na kumakain ng necessary vitamins and minerals and protein, amino acids and essential fats coming from meat kasi inuuna yung gulay parate. So kumakain ng chop soy, kumakain ng utan bisaya, kumakain ng pinakbet, and then yung naiiwan yung mga meat na lamang kasi Meron kaming na-notice that when you do low carb, di ba, nag-eliminate na tayo ng mga carbs, no? So, the only okay carbs would be the low-carb vegetables. But actually, if you are not if you are not cautious about it, you can also become parang somewhat addicted to vegetables na parang ang hirap kumain ng walang vegetables. However, there might be important na impact, especially sa mga, like mga mommies na sobrang payat na, and for those na merong mga autoimmune problems and including those inflammatory problems like mga gout and muscle pains and yung mga joint pains that it could be related to the oxalates na nasa vegetables natin. Yun yung oxalate na naiimbak sa ating katawan and may not serve us good kapag sobra-sobra na sila. The only foods na walang oxalates are actually animal-based foods na Pwede, pwede nating makonsumo with the right amount. So I'm not saying hindi na kayo kakain ng vegetables, but you can consume your vegetables after your required proteins. Kakain muna kayo ng inyong required proteins, and after that, kung kulang pa ang feeling ninyo sa inyong kinakain, now, that's the time that you can have your vegetables na. But of course, not too many then. Especially sa mga diabetic, baka puro gulay na lang yung kinakain sa gabi, at meron pa kayong iniinom pang gamot because you're just doing it DIY, nagdo-do-it-yourself lang kayo, baka nagsa-stress response na kayo while at night. So anong ibig sabihin yan? Baka nag-hypoglycemia kayo habang kayo ay tulog kasi nga walang nagsa-stabilize ang yung blood sugar when you eat because low-carb vegetables, too much vegetables, although they are high in mga phytonutrients, merong mga vitamins and minerals, pero yung overall calorie nila ay mababa lamang and it might not be enough to sustain what you need while you are sleeping. So habang tulog kayo ay nagsushoot up. We have patients na coming in safe list low carb pero panay vegetables yung HbA1c hindi pa rin mababa sa 5.7 it's because of the stress response habang sila ay tulog nagsushoot up yung kanilang blood sugar because the body is making too much sugar in response to stress so wag ninyong stress yung inyong katawan and how to avoid too many vegetables it's also related to mistake number 9 which is too little protein. So, kinukulangan ng proteins. If you are 50 kilogram in size, actually, minimum na required ninyong proteins when it comes to lean proteins, except for yung merong talagang CKD na CKD stage 5 na kailangan mo nang i-lower down yung protein intake, ay kailangan natin on average, on a normal functioning kidney, minimum of when it comes to low carb ha, kasi i-replace natin yung calories coming from carbohydrates, i-replace natin calories coming from proteins, a uh, half kilo po ng proteins. Half kilo yung uh, proteins na ito, if you're a 50 kilogram na babae o lalaki man, nasa 100 grams of protein ang kailangan ninyo. 100 to 120 grams of protein ang inyong kailangan and that is equivalent to kalahating kilo ng karne, ng baboy, baka, manok, is the all other proteins that you like. And if you are a 70 kilogram man, ay baka kailangan kayo ng halos 750, so 3-4 kilo ng karne in a day. So that is why kung makikita ninyo, kulang na kulang talaga yung inyong protein intake. So others, mahirap pong kumain ng karne. I admit ako ay nahihirapan na rin gumaya at lumalaki ng lumalaki na yung aking muscles of mastication, yung masseter sa kakanguya. And yun po talaga ay kailangan. Because others, yung hindi talaga makanguya, they resort, resort into uh, mga artificial proteins like whey protein isolate. Na, yes, it can help, especially with muscle building, especially if you are exercising. But if you are not exercising and you are consuming those, ay baka it can lead into some inflammatory effect. Because those proteins are already refined proteins. So refined na mga amino acids na sila, hindi na sila na 
broken down. So, madali na silang na process as compared to complex proteins na kinakain natin from karne. For those diabetic, it's best to eat a little protein at night. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? If ever you are consuming equivalent to two chicken breasts sa umaga, two chicken breasts sa tanghalian, sa gabi, pwede kayong mag-chicken breast ulit. Pero isa na lang. So, lighter yung gabi, isipin niyo yung kakainin niyo sa gabi, dapat a little lighter than your earlier meals, pero it should have proteins para mas stable yung inyong blood sugar the next day. Makikita ninyo, when you check your blood sugar the next morning, kahit pa parang mas marami yung inyong kinakain na like protein sa gabi as compared sa walang protein, puro gulay lamang, there might be certain phenomenons like dawn phenomenon or somogi effect especially sa magsisimula pa lang na pag prick ninyo sa umaga ay mas mataas pa yung inyong blood sugar sa umaga as compared to sa inyong pagtulog even if you've already fasted enough because it's already the stress response ng inyong katawan. So yeah, that's two little protein. So move on na tayo to mistake number 10. So this is my favorite kasi ito yung, ano ba, ito yung consistent na problema ng lahat. But for me, I don't consider it as a problem. Because sobrang taas na kanilang cholesterol, especially LDL. So if triglycerides yung tumataas, ay baka nasa mistake number one kayo. Hindi totoong low carb. Kayo ay uh, mataas pa sa mga fruit intake at meron kayong kinakain ng mga hidden sugars or kumakain kayo ng mga inflammatory kind of oils and low carb. But if what's high is just total cholesterol and LDL, it is actually not to be feared about, especially na walang signs of inflammation. At yun nga, meron ngang recent study showing the higher the cholesterol in the body, it also has the longer life. However, if it's also too much, sobrang taas talaga, it also indicates that you are consuming more than what you need. And it is usually too much fat. So too much fats... What is too much fats? On average, nasa 90 grams of fats lang yung ating kailangan. Yung 90 grams of fats, kung nasa kutsara yan, that's just about 6 tablespoons of oil. So, 6 tablespoons of uh, oil, 6 tablespoons of coconut oil, of olive oil, or nasa, I think nasa isa at kalahating avocado in a day, equivalent to about 12 egg yolks in a day. And also, ano pa ba? So, yung isang pork chop. So, yung isang pork chop. So, mga tatlong taba ka lang ng pork chop. Yun ay nasa 90 grams of fats na in a day. So, how much fats are you consuming? So, say for example, sa umaga, kumain kayo ng dalawang itlog. Tapos, meron mga nadal- nasa dalawang kutsarang... Nasa dalawang kutsarang oil yung ginamit sa pag sa pagprito so that's already about 45 grams of fats na tapos sa lunch ano yung kinain niyo baka kumain kayo ng bulalo tapos kinain niyo yung bone marrow so yung isang ganon ay baka nasa 40 to 45 grams na din so actually yun pa lang solve na yung inyong fat intake but no sa hapon bumili pa kayo ng ng isa pang coconut bread tapos nilagyan niyo ito ng butter tapos nakadalawang butter kayo that's already another 30 grams of fats na sobra-sobra na sa inyong katawan. And okay, naglagay pa kayo, naglagay kayo ng overnight ninyo na mga na low-carb cereals na gawa sa nuts, gawa sa chia seeds, pero ilang tablespoon ng all-purpose cream yung ginagawa ninyo. Ilang tablespoon ng all-purpose cream na nilagay ninyo dahil baka sobra-sobra na ito. And when it comes to all-purpose cream, mm, I doubt kung ginagamit nyo yung kutsara. I'm sure, ginaganon nyo lang. Nakabuhos lahat. And who knows how much you consume. So, baka you are con- consuming too much fats. One way to do that, one way to correct that, if gusto nyo at least lower down a little your uh, saturated fats in the body, kasi yung katawan natin gumagawa naman, hindi naman yung alisin all together, alisin all throughout. But you can focus more on the unsaturated fats like avocado and olive oil for now, and then yung inyong fat intake naman na galing sa taba ng baboy, sa coconut oil, sa 
um, taba ng baka and eggs, especially kung hindi organic eggs yung kinakain, at least you consume them na iniisip nyo sila. Hindi yung unlimited. We are not afraid of fats. Hindi tayo takot sa taba. Pero anything too much ay sobra-sobrang energy na hindi rin natin kailangan. What's the problem with this one? Kasi um, ta- mataas na fat sa katawan, hindi naman sila ganun kasama if there's no inflammation, nakalutang lang sila and ginagamit mo sila all throughout. But how about when it comes to illness, na accidente ka, that's inflammation, that's stress in the body. So if there's inflammation from other sources, tapos meron ka ng mata- matataas na cholesterol sa katawan, they might not be the best combination. The presence of inflammation and the presence of fats, the same way with uric acid. So matataas na uric acid, Without inflammation, it's okay. But the moment na nagkaroon ka ng COVID, nagkaroon ka ng infection, nagkaroon ng aksidente, anything that causes stress in the body and and eventually leading into inflammation might not be the best na kung meron ka ng other ingredient that can lead into pathologic problems na. So presence of fats and presence of inflammation can result into problems sa ating cardiovascular system. Pagkakaroon ng mataas na uric acid, hyperuricemia plus inflammation, it can lead to gout. It can lead into stone formation in our kidneys. And those are best to be controlled. Hindi naman kailangan na very low or very, very, very low talaga. So just normal or a little above normal but not really very, very high. And yun nga, when it comes to too much cholesterol in the body, that might mean marami kayong excess energy na pwede nyo nang gawin, pwede nyo nang gamitin for exercise or for other productive na activities using your brain because our brain uses a lot of fats in our metabolism and it will fuel you to do your project na matagal nyo nang sineset aside. And of course, it's too much fats na ayaw din natin nandyan lang na hindi natin ginagamit. So we have to have a faster turnover by using them faster and then exercising and of course making sure that your sources of fats are all natural. So, yun yung ating top 10 mistakes sa mga nagdi-DIY na low carb. So, I hope you learned something today just in case kailangan niyo po ng guidance ay meron tayong lcfmasterclass.com now bargain at only 500 pesos for a 1 month subscription ng ating disease. So, diabetes, just 500. Hypertension, just 500. Yung ating a fatty liver, hyperuricemia is all just 500. So, you can check that. And for those naman na kailangan ng at Ting telemedicine consultation kung kailangan if you think kailangan yung ma-assess kung ano yung current condition niyo you can check out the our website at jgartanmd.com meron dyan link on to how to get our telemedicine booking so yun lamang po for today that's top 10 mistakes of LCF DIY learners na ginagawa as per my experience in clinical practice doing low-carb nutrition and fasting for myself, for my family, and for our patients. So maraming salamat po, everyone. Always remember to stick to the safe list of JGC Rojo Food List para po tayo ay nasa right track. So stay low-carb, stay safe. I'll see you again next time. Maraming salamat po, everyone. God bless you, Ma'am Lori. Thank you so much for always being here. Bye-bye po. Thank you.